In 1838, Edgar Allan Poe published The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket, a gruesome tale of mutiny and butchery on the high seas. In one passage, Arthur Gordon Pym and three other shipmates find themselves the only survivors after their ship is wrecked in a storm. Overcome by starvation and thirst, they draw straws in accordance with the custom of the sea to determine who will be sacrificed and eaten so the others might live. The short end of the stick falls to the cabin boy, whose name was Richard Parker. In the novel, Pym survives the ordeal to board another expedition to the South Seas and the unexplored Antarctic. Without warning, the novel ends abruptly with the appearance of a ghostly figure shrouded in white and no further explanation. This, along with the story's ghastly details, caused most readers and reviewers to dismiss the book. So for the next 11 years, Edgar Allan Poe returned to writing poetry and short stories. On October 3rd, 1849, Edgar Allan Poe was found outside a Baltimore tavern, delirious, dressed in strange clothes. He never regained his senses, dying a few days later of unknown causes. His medical records and death certificate were never found. Due to the enduring popularity and influence of Edgar Allan Poe's short stories, today he is considered to be the father of the modern detective story. And his only novel, condemned by critics in 1838, turned out to also be ahead of its time, as 20th century writers such as Jorge Luis Borges and H.G. Wells later considered it to be Poe's greatest work. The novel influenced Herman Melville in writing Moby Dick and deeply inspired Jules Verne, who published a sequel to the story entitled An Antarctic Mystery. Ahead of his time, yes, but just how much foresight did Edgar Allan Poe possess? 35 years after Poe's death, a yacht named the Mignonette left England for Australia and broke apart in a heavy storm. The four-member crew barely escaped with their lives in a lifeboat short on provisions. When one of the men fell overboard and foolishly drank seawater to quench his thirst, he became sick, drifting in and out of consciousness. For days, the survivors had discussed invoking the custom of the sea drawing lots to determine which one would be killed and eaten by the others. When the sick man came to, he discovered the short straw had been drawn for him as a knife plunged into his throat. Feasting on the corpse, the three survivors stayed alive another week and were rescued and put on trial in England for murder. The case became a landmark legal precedent, establishing that necessity was no defense to murder. As the story emerged, people began noticing there was an eerie similarity between these events and the scene in Edgar Allan Poe's novel written decades earlier. Especially when they realized it was the cabin boy who had been cannibalized. And his name was Richard Parker. Strange as it seems. <laughs>